Just to talk around the issue of these modernists. And I will mention why I picked this or the top I chose this because I feel that uh, that they are a real danger to us as Muslims, as a community in this country and around Muslim communities around the world as well. Because these people, they are from us. Uh, you could say they are from us. They're not people coming from the outside. They are from us. They speak our language. They look like us. And you know they may have talked like us as well in the past, but now uh, they, have, they have changed. And we need to know who they are, what they're saying, and what they want. So I thought it'd be a good idea just to tackle, touch on a few points. And again, due to the limited time, you know, it's a, it's a, a topic that needs greater discussion and greater awareness uh, amongst us, all of us. We may feel, oh, it's, that's, I'm not interested in politics. We need to be brothers. We need to be interested in politics. We need to know what is affecting our communities because their ideas and their views are now being forced on us. Uh, they're being forced on us and the government is spending money financing them and uh, helping them and making them the spokesman for us. So we need to be aware of this and uh, unless we are then, you know, we can only blame ourselves when uh, sometime in the future we realize that, uh, you know, we, we can't say anything now. So, it's, and this is the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, in the Quran tells us the traits and the characteristics of the enemy. Uh, read, for example, Surah Al-Baqarah. The first part of Surah Al-Baqarah is dedicated to who? Uh, many ayat are dedicated to the munafiqun. Why? Because Al-Baqarah was revealed in al Madinah, And this was now the threat in al Madinah. The munafiqun didn't exist uh, in Mecca because there was no fear. Uh, in fact, the Muslims were in, in a state of fear. It was when the Muslims went to al Madina. And the Munafiqun now felt afraid that they could not now profess their ideas openly. So they hid themselves under the guise of Islam and pretended to be Muslims. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, explained or exposed this enemy that the Muslims needed to be aware about. Many are, and there are about 13 ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah give us what they are. And one whole surah is called Surah Al-Munafiqun. Why? Because Allah is telling us these are the traits. Humul adu fahdarhum. They are the enemy, so be aware of them. So these modernists, these people, if you like, some of them, yes, they are munafiqeen. And let's not be in doubt about that. They are the modern munafiqeen. <coughs> but <laughs> they are not hiding their nifaq today. They are openly professing their nifaq and their hypocrisy and guising it under Islam and progress and, and uh, uh, what uh, they call uh, liberalism and, uh, and so on. So we need to be aware of the enemies and uh, understand their traits. So very briefly, the history of modernism or modernist in the Muslim world, you can trace back to recent times. Uh, in two parts of the world, in the Muslim world, uh, in the, sorry, in uh, this Indian subcontinent and also in the Arab world. As most of us are from the Indian subcontinent, who's, uh, who knows who brought this idea of modernism to the Muslim subcontinent, Indian subcontinent? Uh, anybody? Anybody? But uh, the one who kind of started the process, or is ascribed as being started the process. Yes. Well, yes. He established a uh, school or college first. Now, Zakalahed. Yes, the very very same person. Uh, they call him. Well, he's given the title of sir by the by the British. Uh, Sayyid Ahmed Khan. Uh, Sayyid Ahmed Khan. He is uh, historical works considered to be the first to introduce his modernism into the the Muslim world. And there is a long history around him. But anyway, if you, you can very quickly just go to the net and do a quick search about him and you find uh, his history and his ideas, subhanAllah. Uh, the, of course, at that time he was, he died at the end of the uh, 19th century, 1898 or something like that. So he was, he existed at the time that the British were occupying, colonizing India. And if you look at some of his ideas, amazing. He was against resistance against the British. He did, he in fact, uh, resisted any kind of jihad against the British. 
and he was uh, for the idea of having peace and in fact he uh, many of his ideas were supporting supporting the British and their uh, 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 occupation of India. So look, look into him anyway. So he was the first person to introduce these ideas uh, into the uh, subcontinent. Uh, with regard to the Arab world, uh, uh, what about the Arab world? Who came? Who brought the ideas to the Arab world? Yes. Now that that's a valid point. Now, uh, but the person who is, if you like. Uh, uh, kind of uh, said to brought modernism <laughs> I mean we use the word modernism in, as they use it to the Arab world was this this character called Jamaluddin al-Afghani yeah. there is some dubious or there is some uh, things around him or his background his history which is unclear but again if you do a little search on the net you'll find uh, even a picture of his <laughs> as well uh, on uh, on the net he was the first he was a Shia he was a Shia uh, Shia uh, from Iran and he brought these ideas of modernism, uh, and his interest was was basically uh, trying to oppose Western rule, and he was kind of trying to gather support, uh, not under Islam, but as Easterners, uh, the Easterners against the Westerners. And his ideas were picked up by Muhammad Abdu. Muhammad Abdu was an Azhari Sheikh. Uh, he was an Azhari Sheikh, and he is the one who, if you like, gave birth to modernism in the Arab world. And many of his students are the ones who called to the modernist ideas of uh, secular, secularism, of uh, women's rights, and, and, and so on. Of course, we understand what they mean by women's rights, that is, uh, for the women to uh, be naked, and so on. Right, so these, these are two, two characters who brought about uh, modernism into the Arab world. And uh, you can read a lot more about them, but in reality, what was it that they wanted? And what were their main ideas? And this, although it's going back about 100 years or, or so, but the modernists of today share many, if not most, of those ideas today. The first of those was to bring the Muslims closer to the Kuffar. Uh, to bring the Muslims closer to the Kuffar in their uh, customs, in their habits, in their culture, and so on. This is what they wanted. And also, in a way, also to bring the so-called the religions, the three religions, Judaism, Christianity, one, in, uh, to closer to each other, to so that they kind of coexist. That's the uh, one. Number two was to kill the spirit of jihad. No resistance, no fighting against occupation or uh, colonialization, and so on. Not even only in the 